Welcome back to Time with Steel Garage. So, we're waiting on parts for the Merc. Time to get back to the Camaro. I'm just gonna keep hopping between the two of them. If you guys remember, Holly was gracious enough to send us a whole Sniper 2 suite for this car. And we got a brand new Vortec 350 crate that I bought. The Vortec 350 crate was dropped in shipping. So we got a bunch of stuff we gotta address there. Make sure the motor's okay, replace a few parts. And it's time to just go ahead and start building this heart of that car. And remember, this is a teenager car, so it's not gonna be crazy. We're trying to build this thing as cheap as possible uh, when we can. So let's just get a motor that runs good. This is a Vortec 350. They made a lot of power for, it was kind of the end of the uh, Gen 1 small block that came in the late 90s. Uh, I think it was up to 2000, correct me if I'm wrong, trucks. And the heads flow really good. They're popular for hot rodding. And it's a good platform that we can upgrade later when my daughter's old enough, we want to put a cam in it, go crazy with it, we can. But for now, brand new engine. It's fine the way it is. We're going to put this Holly Sniper setup on it, and we're going to have a brand new, reliable engine for the car. So I got my buddy Kenneth here. We're going to start taking this thing apart, taking the damaged stuff off, and I'll bring you guys along for the ride. All right, so here's our motor, and you can see it just wasn't shipped well. This is a standard, standard Mexico crate rebuild. I think most of them are from Mexico now at this point. Um, but the oil pan got smashed, and I think we're okay. Hopefully the uh, oil screen and pickup didn't get damaged. We'll see when we take the pan off. I got a new pan. The uh, timing cover got damaged, but we need to change this anyway because these have an EFI sensor uh, that goes here for the stock Vortec trucks that we're not going to use and I got a nice piece from Holly that I bought that is a nice cast aluminum replaces this plastic we're gonna go ahead and put that on other than that the motor looks pretty good so this uses uh, it's a 96 to 2000 block two bolt main one piece rear main seal passenger side dipstick 350 5.7 liter rated horsepower 255 torque 330 with a carburetor, 290 horsepower, torque 375. Now, these are real easy to bump up with a cam swap and some minor stuff to get them to 400 horsepower. There's plenty of videos of that on YouTube. But, let's see here, OE ground cast one piece seal, external rear balance, internal front, powder metal rods, compression ratio 96 to one. Pistons are cast, rings are molly, crankshafts a hydraulic roller. Cam duration 0 0.050, intake 191, exhaust 194. Cam lift is 414, exhaust 428. Lobe separation angles 112. Timing chain single roller. Vortec cast iron heads, combustion chamber 64cc, intake runner 165cc, valve size 1.94, exhaust 1.5, rockers stamp steel 1.5, with a standard four quart oil pan. So. That's a whole lot of mumbo jumbo I just spit at you. But the bottom line is hydraulic cam, roller chain, really good heads. These are great budget hot rod motors. For now, I just want to get a nice reliable running engine because I want to get this bucket of bolts moving under its own power. All right, so we got the oil pan off and you can see that the oil pump screen area wasn't really damaged, just the forward parts of the pan bowed in. So luckily, I think we're okay on the screen here it looks fine but you can see the splash guard windage tray whatever you want to call it got bent on the side here which this is easy i can bend this up with a pair of pliers and the motor looks good it's got a little bit of surface rust from being stored in the shop nothing you can do about that that'll go away after it runs for a little bit but uh got the chain cover off and now we have a new oil pan here new gasket i got this piece from holly it's part number 2151 and it's pretty sweet it is a cast aluminum cover to replace the plastic one and i ordered it with the uh, sensor crank sensor delete on it so there won't be a hole here and this is a nice piece comes with a seal already installed to show you putting that on here we have the factory vortec cr crate Chevy style timing cover. And it's just a piece of plastic. You see the crank sensor goes here for the Vortec fuel injection. It's got a seal built into it and it has a O-ring seal that goes around the outside of it. They're really honestly not that bad. They work fine. But for the application I'm doing, 
Holly makes these uh, swap timing covers for situations just like this where I'm not using the factory fuel injection. So it comes, it's got, it says Holly on it, it's got a nice black finish. You can get these in cast look. It's got a timing mark right in the front of it, just like the factory. It's got the seal already built into it. And it, you can order them with this open. So if you're a regular stock Chevy guy and you wanna replace your timing cover, you can get one just like that. Or you can have it deleted for my applications, what I'm doing. It comes with a little gasket. Also comes with the two pins for locating it on the block, like you can see here. And it comes with new bolts. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this put on. Definitely put your timing cover on before your oil pan, or at least leave your oil pan drop down so that the timing cover can get over the seal and then you can bring the oil pan up. Definitely not one of my cleanest RTV days, but uh, the timing cover is on. New oil pan. And so these parts are trash. Next thing we're gonna do is pop these valve covers off, make sure that the, you really can't trust these crate engines. So you wanna expect the valve train when you get them and it makes dropping the intake easier so you don't get hung up on the valve covers. One of my favorite little secrets, Ford RTV TA31, TA-31. This stuff is amazing, it works on oil pans, intakes. It's meant for real tight tolerance engines that don't use gaskets. Uh, but this RTV is really good stuff. It's expensive, but it's good. I got our Vortec 350 intake gaskets here. I'm getting them ready to put on the motor. I go ahead and I've set them on the uh, engine and I label them, put a T on them for top. And basically what I'm gonna do is prep the backside of them. And my Ford silicone is getting a little old. So I picked up some uh, Optimum Gray. It's basically the newest version of Ultra Gray, which is what I like to use on intake stuff. A little of this stuff here, just put some on my finger, and we're gonna put it around the water jacket, which is the forward and back port on these gaskets. So, nothing crazy, but it'll help seal these water jackets up. Put a little bit of gasket slack on these will make our lives a lot easier when we go to put the intake manifold on. So around the intake ports themselves. It'll help keep these guys from shifting around when we go to put that intake manifold on, which can be a huge pain in the butt. So basically on the outside of all these holes where these bolts are gonna go through, it helps to put some of this stuff. And then once we stick these to the motor, they'll set in place. And future me will hate myself for doing this, but current me will make installing my intake manifold a lot easier. See the water jackets here, 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 and here. And you basically just wanna line up your holes, get the water jacket RTV tacked down. And none of these gaskets fit perfectly, but you wanna get them as close as you can to perfect. That's pretty good right there on that one. Let's get the other side and you can see this gasket wanting to move around that's what that shellac is for it'll dry here in a minute and it'll keep that from happening so we're going to let those set up for like 10 minutes before we disturb them and the next thing we're going to do is put about a quarter inch bead on each side of these china walls now you've heard me say this before and I'm sure you've heard just about every other YouTuber on the planet say this before, but these intake casket kits, normally they come with rubber pieces that go over here and I showed you on the old engine why that's a bad idea. Whoever had the motor before me used those. They almost always get dry and they pull and then they create a big vacuum leak. So most engine builders, and I don't pretend to be an engine builder, but most engine builders use RTV and you want to 
overlap with the gasket there. And you want a quarter inch bead all along this wall. Okay, now the next thing we want to do is we want to put gasket maker around the water jacket just like we did on the bottom side but we're going to do it on the top side and we don't want to be messy like that get it all inside the motor all right there you have it one small block 350 uh intake manifold gasket installation doesn't matter if it's a vortec or a gen one they all pretty much the same some have water jackets in different locations now we want this to set up for like 10 minutes, get the uh, RTV kind of crusting up, getting sticky, what have you. Let me just set my Mark One clock here, my cell phone clock. It's not an iPhone. Please be join the, join the crew of people that make fun of me for not having an iPhone. I know you want to. Let's see here. Boom. 10 minute timer is going. Now you want to use sealant in the bolts because it is possible for oil to uh, come up the threads on some of these holes. So I went ahead and actually got a factory intake manifold bolt kit for a 96 to 2000 truck. It's a Philpro kit. I got it at O'Reilly's. Part number is E is an Echo, S is in Sierra, 72224. And these bolts are great because they're meant for Vortec Intec manifolds and the threads come pre-sealed for that exact reason. Now, if you have bolts and they're not sealed, I'll show you another one of my secrets that it's called Gas Oila E-Seal. And I get the kind that's meant for PTFE, E10, and E85, because you can use it on everything. It's fuel sealer. It's not, gas doesn't need it, but it also works great on anything that needs sealant. Fittings, hydraulic, bolts, anything, you name it. This is like my go-to stuff. But these are already basically coated in it, so we don't have to worry about that. One thing I forgot to mention is this little guy right here. Try not to get RTV in there. And then you just want to go over all your bolt holes. You can take a bolt and just make sure they're all going to fit without gasket interference. Because once you put this intake manifold on, you can't see anything. And these bolts, if they don't line up, then that means the intake manifold moved everything around and that's not gonna be fun. Now, another thing you can do to make your life easier is actually get some long studs and install studs. You'll see people do that, install studs into the heads that stick up and then the manifold just rides down the studs kind of like carburetor studs and it sits right where it needs to go. I don't have those. So I'm doing it the old school way because you don't need to do it that way. These motors are uh, run on the stand. They come with a compression sheet and everything and it looks brand new inside. So while we're waiting for that stuff to dry, I'm just gonna wiggle all these. It's a hydraulic cam, so Everything feels pretty much the same. And we'll check lashing. Okay, this is the hard part. Let's see if I can get this close the first time. Looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. Let's get the boat hole boat holes. The boat bolt bleh, the bolt holes. Let's see if we can get a bolt in each one of these bad boys here. That's the ultimate test. If you gotta move this thing substantially, 
or it moves substantially when you were putting in, that's bad juju. And you're probably gonna wanna take it back off and start over. All right, I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot, a lot. Tell you what I don't like, that these bolts don't come with washers. Yeah, because this is an aluminum intake, I want a washer on there. So I'm just gonna put a washer on each one of these bad boys and then we're gonna sink them down. Plenty of thread engagement there. I'm not worried about that. What I'm more worried about is marring up the intake with the bolt head. Now these bolt heads are flanged, so there's really, you don't really need a washer, but I would just, it's real easy to mess up these aluminum intakes. And this is a pretty intake that Holly sent me. So I want it to stay that way. Obviously keep track of your hardware so it doesn't go on a motor. That's a bad day. All right, I'm gonna start in. I'm just gonna get them touching. In to out, in to out. And in to out. And out. All right, so our intake manifold is on. We know that we got a good seal. Now we're just gonna go around and torque this. Let me look up the torque specs real quick. We're looking for 11 foot pounds. I'm gonna convert that to inch pounds, 132 inch pounds. And uh, we're gonna step it up. So I'm gonna start out with, let's just go with 50. All right. All right, there's 50. Let's bump it up to 100. You wanna use a torque wrench on an intake manifold or anything that has a sealing surface, especially aluminum, because if you don't have them all tightened evenly, it will leak. And generally stepping up torques is a good idea because it allows the manifold to evenly seat. You don't want to just go ham on one bolt. All right. All right, torqued, marked, torqued, marked, torqued, marked, torqued, marked, torqued. Marked, torqued. Marked, torqued, marked, torqued, marked, torqued, marked. You see that RTV is sticking out, that's fine. I'd rather it stick out and dry and then I can come back and trim it with a razor and clean it up and you didn't get anything in the hole in there, that's good. Same thing on the front here, you see that Good seal on that china wall. That front wall of the block is what we're looking for. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just throw these uh, valve covers back on now that I've been able to look at the valve train and find out. I mean, I've heard horror stories. I've seen it actually. My very first uh, crate engine I ever bought. Uh, ran it the first time. It was ran on the stand, you know, like they always claim. And I just couldn't get it running right. and popped the valve cover off and the number eight rocker had broken off the stud and was just flopping around in there. Luckily nothing got crazy, but you just never know. Metal failure, parts failure, things happen. It's not necessarily the engine builder's fault. Nowadays, it's just, it's tough to get reliable parts. 7 16th, I believe. It's starting to get exciting, eh? I got this little impact on a super low setting, so don't freak out if you hear impact noises. I'm not impacting these things on. This is a little bit driver. All 
right. Well, for the first time since we had this engine, we've got a brand new oil pan on here. We got a new Holly high rise intake manifold on here. And we got a Holly timing cover, cast aluminum timing cover. So now it's exciting. We can start putting other stuff on here, you know? Shiny stuff. You know, one cool thing about this Holly intake is it came with a couple of new stickers for the shop and uh, it comes with all the plugs for the intake manifold, which I bought a lot of intakes. They don't all come with plugs like this. So I'm gonna put these plugs where they go and I'm not gonna tighten them down, but I'm just gonna kind of put them where they belong so that I don't forget about them. Cause I'm not sure which ports we're gonna use yet and which ones we aren't gonna use. These Vortec 350s, you have to run a coolant bypass and most people run the coolant bypass right off the front of the intake manifold underneath the thermostat down to the water pump, which I'll show you guys that when I do it. But a little bit different than the older Gen 1 small blocks. The older small blocks had a bypass integrated right into the thermostat housing on some of the motors or right next to the thermostat housing. But these aftermarket intakes are pretty sweet because they come tapped for all, all those different things I already thought about for people using them in hot rod applications and other things. So that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Where do these little guys go? All right, that little dude goes there. This little guy does not go there. Oh, there he goes right there. Oh, well, I've just got these all kind of started so they don't fall out or into the motor. I got this Holly Sniper Two install kit, part number 520-1, says Sniper EFI installation kit on it. Comes with your air cleaner gasket, your stud for the air cleaner, comes with uh, your studs for the sniper itself, throttle linkages, nuts, all that good stuff. So super convenient. Also comes with uh, zip ties and electrical connectors. But for now, I'm looking for studs and a gasket. Gasket and studs. This is the scary part of building a motor. Don't drop hardware in anything. Easier to do than you think. I'm actually gonna put a little anisees on these because aluminum, sometimes it just gets a little bit when, these, when you try to take these back out in the future, it can be a pain in the butt. I'm gonna goop a little anesthesia on them. Get it all over my hand because it's impossible to not do that. And then future Jimmy will appreciate it when these aren't seized into the intake. All right. This anti seize has got me looking like I'm all covered in chrome trying to get to the gates of Valhalla. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's impossible to not get it all over yourself. I'm terrible about it. Literally impossible. That's from my buddy Mark over in the UK. That's, uh, that's my impression of you. Literally impossible. Here's the exciting part right here. Brand new Holly Sniper 2. And if you look at this unit, it is obviously just looks significantly different than the Gen 1 unit that I installed. The whole package is smaller, sleeker. There's no hose coming outside for fuel. It's all integrated and cast into the housing. The linkage, a lot of guys on the Gen 1 snipers had issues with casually getting into the throttle. As in, the sniper didn't like to go off part throttle or idle to full throttle, so it would just jerk the car. and. Uh, a lot of guys came up with their own progressive linkages. Well, Holly, I think, paid attention to the community and they made their own progressive linkage. So this is supposed to be a lot better. You can see the... Uh... And then they also, uh, wiring-wise, everything is basically simplified and it's all quick connects. So it's pretty, it's pretty sweet. I mean, I think, I think a lot of the complaints about the Sniper 1 were legit and I think Ultimately, I think Holly allowed the car community to 
fix a lot of the sniper problems and our solutions themselves into the product. But yeah, that looks pretty sweet on there, I'm not gonna lie. Big thing about installing these snipers or any carburetor or anything is you wanna make sure the butterflies are actually opening smoothly. Let me show you what I mean. When you, these things can get off center just a little bit and cause binding on the butterflies on the intake themselves. So you wanna just kinda gradually test fit everything and snug nuts down by with your fingers and just keep opening those butterflies. Make sure it's not ever gotten to a situation where it's binding up. All right, it's pretty standard. If you've ever installed a carburetor before, that's basically what it's like installing a sniper. And same thing here, I'm gonna throw a nut, I'm gonna throw a uh, washer on top of all these studs just to prevent the nut from digging into the sniper unit. Washer, a washer for you. A wash air for you and a wash air for you. Okay, everyone has wash air now. And you get the nut, you get the lime on the coconut, you also get the lime on the coconut. Please, dear God, don't drop one of these in the motor. Okay, you get the lime on the coconut over here, you get the lime on the coconut. You get the lime on the coconut. Okay, there we go. All right, so far so good. The butterflies are still opening. I got some lock washers here too, and I think I want to use them. Motors vibrate, and there's plenty of nut left there, so I'm gonna bring these nuts back off and then re-put the lime on the coconut after I got the lock washer under the nut. You know, when I was in the military, they had these little uh, maintenance monthly cartoon things that they would put out and it was like, you know, it was like the army's attempt. I think they started doing it in the eighties and it was like the army's attempt at putting out like safety messages and common maintenance practices in a way that they thought young kids essentially and young men would, and women would actually read but uh, I always just enjoyed, there was a, <laughs> you've probably seen it on a sticker, but it's a bolt running after a washer and it says, not without me you don't or something to that effect and it, it's pretty funny. I always think about that cartoon when I'm putting nuts on things, so. Anyways, cool story, yeah, great story, Jimmy. I'm sure I really entertained the listener out there with that story, really. Really good storyteller. And I'm actually gonna fully dress this motor because when we put this motor in the Camaro, we're actually gonna put the body on the lift and we're gonna drop the front sum frame. We're gonna lift the motor up into the car from the floor or really what we're really gonna do is we're gonna lower the car down on top of the motor and the subframe. So that will enable us to have the motor basically fully assembled. Okay, that looks pretty sweet on there. I'm not gonna lie. They put the lime on the coconut. Still getting anti-seize all over the place. All right, well, we can get this uh, unit snugged down, I think. What size is that, half inch? Booyah, first try, first try. Start bringing these nuts down here. Like I said, as you're doing this, just gradually Gradually be moving these butterflies. Make sure that you haven't put the carb in a bind and you don't want to over tighten these nuts at all. So what I'm going to do is kind of crisscross, snug them down lightly. And then I'm going to look in the instructions and see what torque Holly calls for. They put the lime on the coconut. I don't know why, where that is from or why it is in my head, but it's in there. So the Sniper 2, it comes with this uh, quick start manual with instructions, which is 
pretty much the same as the old one, but it does look like they've improved these instructions. All right, so it says 60 to 80 inch pounds. I'll bust out a crow's foot here because I can't get a torque wrench in on all these, I don't think. Oh, actually you can. Let's drop it down. Let's go to 30 first. So we don't break anything. All right, there's 30. Everything's still moving good. Let's bring it up to 50. All right, there's 50. And then I'm gonna go up to, there's 65. Let's split the difference for the Holly. We'll go 70. Perfect. Butterfly test, Holly Sniper 2 installed. And I'm still getting anti-seize all over these brand new shiny parts, which really bothers me. We got ourselves a chrome, don't get you home, water neck. That's probably going to leak, but it'll work for now. All right, well, I rated the performance wall at uh, O'Reilly's while I was there, and I got a 180 thermostat. That'll sit right there. And I got a super cheap, extra shiny chrome don't get you home water neck for people to point at and make fun of. Oh, look at that chrome water neck on there. It's so stupid. Oh, my God. <laughs> you think he's got any horsepower to go with that chrome? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know who you are. Hardware that doesn't even fit. Are you kidding me? Wow. Good job, Spectre. Well, I'll surely be ordering something better than this, but for now, I had to drill this brand new Spectre thermostat housing to get these bolts to fit. Apparently I didn't drill enough. I'll be buying something better, but in the meantime, boom. All right, well, I think the last thing we're gonna do for the day is I did get a better distributor tie down because I just couldn't bring myself to put a rusty one on it. And so for now, I'm just gonna run this in by hand and uh, we gotta get our harmonic balancer install tool. Put the harmonic balancer in, make sure everything's timed properly, and then we'll drop the distributor in and we'll get back to putting this thing together. But, boom. I think that's a good quitting point for today. We've got the new oil pan on. We got a harmonic balancer started. We got the valve covers off, we inspected the valve train, put new intake manifold gaskets on the high-rise Holly intake with the new Holly Sniper 2 black unit, put on a horrible cheap water neck, a new distributor tie down, and a Holly cast aluminum Vortec EFI delete timing cover. And it's starting to look like a motor. Pretty excited about it. I'll come back out here, I'm getting paged by the wife, it's dinner time, so. We'll continue building this bad boy tomorrow. What's up? It's a new day. I'm wearing my finest tank top for you and we're gonna get back to working on this motor. So we're at the point where I wanna drop the distributor in. I wanted to show you guys how to do that because it's a confusing thing for a lot of people. And I know some of you watching are like, come on dude, dropping a distributor in is easy. But hey, there's people watching that don't know how to do that. And I also wanted to show you kind of this sniper suite that Holly sent me. It's pretty cool. So this is the HyperSpark coil. Comes with a really nice billet mount. Everything's plug and play. And the CDI box, the actual controller for the HyperSpark, it's like half as big as the Gen 1 was. And then they sent me a PDM unit, which is super awesome because it makes all your wiring simple and self-contained. Tells you exactly what goes to where. So if you're doing a car like I'm doing where there's going to be very little wiring in it, this makes for a really clean install. And what's cool is everything comes 
this, if you buy the whole ecosystem or whatever they like to call it these days, you get to plug everything in and you end up really only wiring like four wires. It's pretty crazy. And they've actually simplified it from gen one, these big connectors, everything's weather pack. So it's, it's pretty cool. Anyhow, I've got some, uh, I've got headers on here just for motivating myself and some clamshells. And obviously I'm gonna take some of this stuff back off and paint it. We're gonna paint the oil pan on the motor. Got the harmonic balancer installed. That's really easy to do. I did a little video on my channel. If you wanna see that, just check it out and it'll show you exactly how to do that. It takes about 10 minutes with the right tool. It's super easy. But let's get to dropping in the distributor. So there's a few different ways that you can make sure that an engine's on top dead center when you drop a distributor in. The easiest thing to do, you see this mark on the harmonic balancer, is take your finger and on a small block Chevy, this very forward cylinder, on the right is your number one cylinder, okay? Grab a wrench, turn the motor clockwise until this line lines up. And when you feel air rushing past your finger, it's probably on the compression stroke. If you're confused and not sure, pull a valve cover off. If your intake and exhaust valves are level flat and not on the rock, not on the rock, then you're truly on top dead center. Now that we know that the motor is on top dead center, we're gonna drop the distributor in. And when you look down in the hole, I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see it. Do you see that slotted? There, you can see it right there. Looks like a flathead screwdriver. That's your oil pump drive gear that connects to the bottom of the distributor. And that is what causes a lot of problems for people when they don't fully seat the distributor. So I already got my O-rings and stuff on this distributor. It comes with them. I've got the cap off and I've got, the distributor comes with this Lucas Performance gear lube for break-in. We want to put a copious amount on this gear before we drop it in. All right, so we got gear lube just oozing off the bottom of this thing. I'm going to start it in here and you want your rotor on your distributor head to face towards that number one cylinder we just used to put the motor on top dead center, okay? So you just want to gently move this thing down this is a brand new motor, so it's gonna be a little tight. And you gotta find the right tooth that points this thing to that number one. And you also have to line up on that drive gear. And I'm having trouble right now. I'm trying to find that drive gear where it's at. I'm gonna to have to move that oil pump gear, or oil pump shaft to get this to sit happily. Okay, so I got her to sit down in on the intake manifold. And the problem here is, notice how this is facing the back cylinder here and not the front cylinder where I want it to face. That's a problem, and that means we're gonna have to pull the distributor out, use a long flathead screwdriver, and turn that drive gear so that it faces, or that, I keep saying drive gear, that the shaft that connects to the bottom of the distributor gear is facing this way right now and I need it to face more like that way so that I can get this rotor to face on top dead center. Now, you can actually put a distributor in any direction you want and make it still run the firing order correctly. But then when you go to sell the car or somebody else goes to work on it, they're gonna be really confused as to why this thing is pointing over here when it's firing on the number one cylinder. So it's just good practice to do it the right way and get it facing the number one cylinder or top dead center on whatever motor you're working on. All right, we got our uh, distributor facing our number one cylinder now, or pretty close. Might mess a little bit more, but when you're having trouble with these distributors, get yourself a really long flathead screwdriver, pull the distributor out and stick it down there until you hit that oil pump drive shaft and move it around till you get the distributor to line up where you want it. It can be a little tricky, just take your time. We're gonna move on to phasing the distributor which is really easy with this sniper setup. The first thing we need to do is look at the HyperSpark instructions and it tells us whether we need to rotate the distributor clockwise or counterclockwise. Chevy, clockwise. Holly gives you this little tool. So now we've got our distributor in, porting at the number one cylinder. And we're gonna put this little guy on here. 
and we're going to rotate the distributor clockwise because that's what the instruction said for a Chevy. See what I'm doing here? I'm rotating the base while I hold this on top of the rotor cap, right? Boom. Once that falls in there, this distributor is now phased and timed. So what we're going to do is we're going to lock the nut down on the base of the distributor right here and we're also going to get a little marker and we're going to mark where our number one spark plug wire is going to go. And you can see on the bottom of this distributor cap, there's a little indentation right there. We're going to put a little mark right here and that mark's going to correspond to the very first spark plug wire we install. And that spark plug wire is going to correspond to this very front cylinder. All right, so I'm going to use a little dab of nail polish that I keep in the toolbox because it works great for this kind of thing. And I'm just going to put a little dab of yellow nail polish right there because that's going to dry and harden and I'll be able to see right away where my number one spark plug wire goes. Next thing we're going to do is torque the distributor down so that it doesn't move. All right, put a little torque on this distributor tie down here. Nothing crazy, but we don't want it to move. That's good and tight right there. I can't move that, can't move that. All right, then we take our little tool off and now you can see the little mark I put right there. See that little mark? That is our number one cylinder spark plug mark and that's where it's gonna go. Now we can do fun stuff like put the distributor cap back on. So if you've gotten to this point of installing your sniper system, you've got all the hard stuff done. Honestly, the thing that's the trickiest part is putting the distributor in for a lot of people. And I understand why they're a pain in the butt sometimes. This one was a pain in the butt today. Just had to get that oil shaft where I wanted it. Our Sniper 2 system for the motor is installed other than wiring. We're gonna get this valve cover back on real quick. Again, this is a super low torque impact driver. All right, well, there we go. Now we got to put the accoutrement on there. You know what I'm saying? Accoutrement. <laughs> and my brother and his friends that are listening, they're laughing right now, but that's an inside joke. All right, Holly sent us this uh, air cleaner. They have air cleaner bases for any project out there. I had to buy one for the Buick when I first installed it that will clear the fuel lines on the side of the sniper unit. So if you have your own air cleaner assembly and you just want to use the base, you can order this base to use an air cleaner that you already have. Oh yeah. Would you look at that? She's a beauty. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is our motor. Now we're just going to be doing uh, small stuff, you know, plugs, wires, bungs. There it is. Brand new Vortec 350 with a Holly top end, essentially. We got a Holly high-rise intake. We got a Holly Sniper 2 black unit. We got a Holly Hyper Spark distributor. We got a Holly air cleaner. We got a Holly timing cover. And she's already got headers on here. I mean, they're just mocked up, no gaskets, but this is essentially the motor. This is what it's gonna be. And the beauty thing is, once I click all the plugs and stuff together for the Sniper with our box is over here. It'll be like four wires. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna mount this little PDM unit right on the firewall. And uh, I'm gonna use one of those drag racing uh, boxes on the inside of the car to wire the headlights, taillights, turn signals, the basic stuff that we need. This car is gonna be super simple. And if we ever have an issue with the motor, it's probably gonna be something to do with this right here, finding a wire or a fuse. I mean, th this, uh, this, these PDMs are really the wave of the future. Most race cars are going to this PDM stuff now. I mean, it's they're pretty sweet. Got lights across the top to tell you if there's a problem. It keeps everything nice and clean. And if you're not somebody that's strong on wiring, I love wiring. I love, I love and hate wiring. One of my biggest pet peeves in automotive is electrical wiring. So 
But if you're someone that's not super strong with wiring, these little Holly Sniper PDMs, they tell you the wire sniper SW 12 volt pink 20 gauge pin four. It's got numbers right on the side of it. You go to number four, you put the wire right there. I mean, it's Jimmy proof. That's me. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed putting this motor together. Nothing crazy, short block crate, top end, Holly Sniper 2 system. This car has come a long way in the last couple of weeks. I hope you guys are as excited I am to get this thing running again. It's gonna happen soon. So thanks for joining me. Please like, please subscribe, please tell your friends, comment, even the negative ones, I read them. Some of you guys are kind of mean, if I'm being honest, but it's cool. I appreciate the criticism, and uh, we'll see you next time on Time with Steel Garage.